What is going on everybody? Welcome back to the channel. Today I am bringing you a PC build. Um, we're going to go over the PC components we're using. We're going to go over why and what we're going to be using the computer for. And then we're going to do a little bit of a, uh, maybe like a, it's going to be like kind of a how to slash like some quick, like clean edits of me building the PC. And then maybe like a review of the PC, but it's mainly going to be a video of me building the PC. I'm going to go over the components and why I chose to use the components. And yeah, so that's basically it. Let's go ahead and jump into it. We're gonna do a components breakdown of what we decided to go with and pretty much, like I said, why um, why, and what we're using the computer for. So let's dive into that now. All right guys, so let's uh, jump into who I'm building the computer for, what it's gonna be used for, and then we'll do the components breakdown. Uh, my mom's been wanting a new computer for a long time. She's been telling me she's gonna buy a MacBook, a MacBook, and I'm like, I have so many components laying around that I could literally build an entire computer for you that's gonna be probably 10 to 20 times better than you would spend, uh, for the money you would spend on a Mac, uh, the performance you're gonna get with the components that I have and I'm gonna build. The computer is basically gonna be for just pretty much her work, maybe some like Microsoft Excel things, like just like office style, like management work on a computer. So therefore I kind of talked her out of it. Um, I needed like two, two or three components to make it work. Everything else I had, um, everything from the case to the cooler I'm gonna use, the GPU that's completely overkill that I'm gonna use, but I'm laying around, it's laying around, so we're gonna use it. And um, I'm also probably, when I go down and visit her some once in a while, I might do some light gaming on it or whatever. So that's why we're gonna use some of the stuff we're gonna use. And keep in mind, if I were building this for anybody else and we were gonna buy all the components, um, from brand new on store i wouldn't go with a lot of these gaming and like gaming design um components we're using them because of the fact i have so many parts laying around from doing pc builds throughout the year i build a lot of stuff uh, for myself i'm always changing components and also building things for people so i've acquired a lot of things um, in my uh, pc inventory as far as parts goes so we're using a lot of the stuff that i had laying around so i just want to justify that um, that's the reason you're going to see a lot of gaming uh, components rather than just basic computer building points, components because you wouldn't need this type of stuff if you're just building a basic like everyday maybe like a work office work computer or a like um, just pretty much yeah like an office or everyday browsing computer you wouldn't need these components but this is what I'm using because I have majority I have a majority of these parts laying around already so let's jump into components um, for a motherboard we're going to use a B450 or Aorus Elite. Um, just a great motherboard and you know for the price and everything we went with we decided to go with this This is a great motherboard. I've used it in many builds before so that's why I'm going with it now Looks really nice too for aesthetics. I like to build my things to look nice as well So we're trying to do some really clean nice looks as you know as just the way that I like to do things um, for a GPU we went with the Ryzen 25 uh, a Ryzen 26 X 2600 X um, again, another great component. Uh, I use a lot of AMD stuff just because right now, as far as like price to performance goes, you really cannot beat AMD in my opinion. I'm not saying Intel is not the way to go. This is just what I like to use. And as far as the way we're going with this, um, this build and budget and things wise, the 2600X is gonna kill whatever we need to do. It's gonna do a great job and it's gonna be able to just be an absolute workhorse. Um, for, um, let's see, for memory, we went with Corsair Vengeance uh, RGB Pro uh, at 3200 megahertz, a 16 gigabyte kit. It's gonna be plenty for everything that uh, we'll be getting done on this computer. Um, storage wise, we have a 970 EVO plus 500 gigabyte M.2. It's gonna be great. This will have our OS on it, all our main prioritized programs that we wanna run super quick. Maybe if there's any games that go on the computer, that will go on here. But all our main programs that we wanna run really quick and really good will be on here. As far as just for general storage, we're just gonna put a one terabyte hard drive in it. Nothing fancy, it's just a hard drive. This will have, you know, basic things like files, overload things that aren't that prioritized. And that's nothing too crazy uh, as far as a, as a hard drive is kind of a hard drive in my opinion at this point. Um, at this point, you could really get away with using M.2s, but we're gonna put a hard drive in it just in case there's any files and just heavy storage things that we can need to put on the computer. So that's gonna do that. GPU, we by no means need to put this in here, but I have a 1070 laying around as I just put a 2070 Super in my current rig. So this has just been laying around now. I also have a 1050, uh, 1050 Ti Cerberus edition laying around somewhere. Um, I could have put that one in here, but once again, I mean, this component is doing nothing for me. It's just sitting in a box. So why not just put it in the PC? This way, hey, if I ever wanna play games on it when I'm visiting or something like that, it'll have no problem playing games at 1080p with great frames with 1070. And then as far as cooler goes, I this this uh, 2600X comes with a stock uh, rig Prism fan, I believe it is. And that fan works great. But once again, another part I just have laying around is a Corsair H 
H500i uh, liquid cooled cooler. So we're gonna use that. Like I said, just happens to be laying around. So I'm just gonna utilize the components because they're doing me no good just sitting in a box anyway. So we're gonna put that in. It's gonna look really nice. This should look really nice when we're all finished up with it. And that's pretty much uh, the justification for why I chose the parts, what we're doing with this computer. As I said, just to wrap it up before we start building, it's gonna be mainly a work computer, office work style computer for my mom from her home office. Um, so that's basically it. Maybe some light gaming on it once in a while if I ever use it or something like that. But that's what we're gonna be putting in this and we're gonna start building it now. So right now we're gonna set the motherboard up with the RAM, the CPU, everything on the motherboard, and then we'll get that into the tower itself. Uh, the case itself and we'll go from there so let's get a, all the boxes open up get the motherboard built up and we'll go from there okay so i realized i just forgot one thing i forgot the power supply the case and i botched uh this is an h100i this is an h500i so the cooler is an h100i from corsair and the case is an h500i um NZ, from nzxt i botched that I, I mixed them up and i forgot to mention the case but that's that and then as far as the power supply goes, I just have an EVGA 500 uh, watt laying around. So it's nothing crazy. It's just a, a bronze, nothing too nuts. Uh, it's just something I had in um, an old, not an old build, but one of my first builds that was not in there for that long. So we're just gonna put that in here for now. Um, I know it's not gold, uh, gold standard or nothing like that, but this is gonna be fine. I've used it before and have no issues. So we're gonna be putting that in for now. And I just wanted to get, th get that out of the way because I know I forgot it really quick. So there we go. Now we're gonna build the motherboard as I said previously, so let's jump into it. All right guys, so the first step we're gonna do is we're gonna install the CPU. So you're gonna pop this little arm up right here on the motherboard, pop that up. Here we have our CPU. Also, just to just show you guys, this is the fan um, in this box. We're not gonna be using that because as I said, we're gonna use the Corsair H100i. But this is how we're gonna install the CPU. It comes right here, you just pop it open like so. Grab it on the ends of your finger chips, tips. Try not to touch the um, the pins underneath. You don't want to do that. And then, if you look really closely here, there is a little gold arrow. And if you look on the motherboard, there's a gold arrow on the motherboard too. So you basically line those two arrows up with each other. You just drop it in like so, like that. And then you just push the arm down. CPU is installed. Really that simple. And mind you, this is pretty much the same process for an Intel uh, CPU. You just need to make sure that you're looking at the right way orientation where these arrows line up and the clips on a motherboard for an Intel is a little bit different, but this is AMD. Um, this is how you do an AMD. Okay guys, so here's our RAM. The next step is to install the RAM on the motherboard. Now there's something that a new builder may overlook, which I'm gonna try to help you guys to not make that mistake. And that is the fact that you have to put the RAM sticks in a certain spot, certain order. Um, you might think you just put it in anywhere and it works that way. That's not the way it works. You want to make sure you're utilizing your dual channel memory. So the easiest way to figure out how to do this, aside from me showing you guys, you should look at your uh, manual to your motherboard. And in your manual, it will say whether or not you're using two modulars or four. We're using two in our setup. So basically, you want to put one stick in a DDR4 slot number one and another stick in slot um, two. So. That's just something you need to realize. It could vary from motherboard to motherboard, but um, and nevertheless, that's how you do it um, with this specific motherboard. Always look at your manual and you will figure it out. It will say how to orientate it. Okay, so that's finished now. You pretty much just make sure, you also wanna make sure that all these clips get locked in and down once you uh, unflap them, cause you have to unclick them to get it in. But make sure they all click down. You just push down on each end, they'll click in. And that's pretty much it. You, that's your uh, RAM installed. All right guys, so I changed my mind with the cooler that I wanna go with. Um, I had a couple of just stock AMD coolers laying around. I had a Wraith, uh, Wraith Stealth. I got a Prism laying around and we're gonna use the Prism. Um, the Prism is just a stock cooler that comes with some of the higher end um, AMD coolers. Um, I got like, a, I think two of these laying around that I never used because I either went with, uh, you know, uh, water coolers or just better coolers because we were gonna overclock CPUs, but we're definitely not gonna overclock this chip. And even if we did, 
it's not going to be very much. That's something for a whole other video. So I don't really need the uh, water cooler for this, the original H100 I was going to use. I'll just hold on to that one um, just for in the future. And plus, I want to make this video um, pretty much catered to a new builder. Um, not that that's very difficult to do, but it is a little bit more in depth. And I'd rather just use something that would come with someone's CPU, for instance, like the 2600X where you would have this guy that comes with that. But to upgrade a little bit more, this one also is a stock AMD cooler, which is the Race Prism, but it has some RGB and stuff and it's just a bigger, beefier cooler. So this should keep this chip really cool. I'm gonna use this instead, show you guys how to install this because it's very simple. And yeah, just wanted to justify why I'm not gonna use that anymore because you might be wondering where's that part of the install in the video and it's not gonna be because we're gonna switch it up and we're gonna use this guy. Um, so let me set back up over here and I'll show you guys how to put the cooler on. All right guys, so we're gonna install the cooler now. You see these little teeth right here? There's one on this side, one on this side. So basically you're gonna slip it on I'm gonna try to do it in a time lapse because it is a little bit tricky, but I'll get it. It's a little bit of a pain, but you just have to hook the little square on these tabs here. Um, it's pretty simple, but it takes a little bit of messing around with this little handle to get it to actually latch. It's gonna be tight when you get it on, you gotta latch it down and it'll lock into place. So let me show you guys in a time lapse. If it goes quick, I won't time lapse it, but I have a feeling it's gonna be a little bit of a pain because I've done these before and they take a little bit of uh, finessing. So we're gonna get this on. Okay, so it actually went pretty smoothly. Like I said, you just pop those squares onto the little tabs, push it, it will feel tight. You just lock it, as you can see, it clicks over to the left there. And then another thing you don't wanna forget is to plug in your CPU fan header, which is marked on your motherboard. Should be in the same location, but you will see it if you look. If not, look at that manual, you'll figure it out, I promise you. And just make sure you line that up, push down, and that's basically how you do it. And we'll tuck wires away later. Okay guys, now we're gonna install our M.2. Here's our 970 EVO Plus uh, M.2 right here. And this varies from motherboard to motherboard, but this motherboard has two M.2 slots. You got one right here, one right here. The M.2A and M.2B slot on this board. If you need help with your specific board, once again, look at your manual. You will find a section that talks about the M.2 slots and which ones to use and different speeds that are capable of being used with this with your specific board. But on the Aorus uh, Elite, this is the slot we're gonna utilize here. So what you're gonna do is remove this little screw that has this little cover on and then remove the cover. Place it to the side. Um, next, what you're gonna do is, you're, first off, I'm gonna do, normally you would just take your M.2, slide it in. It's still the same process, but there's one extra step. With this board, you have to use a M.2 standoff. It comes with your motherboard. So what you do is, you just put it into this slot here. Then you take your M.2, you slide it into the slot here, line it up with the slot, push, it will click in. It's gonna flap up in the air and then you take your M.2 screw, little guy that comes with, your, with the uh, M.2. You push down, you drop that screw right into there, like so, get your screwdriver. Your M.2 is installed. Little bit of an extra step with the standoff because not all motherboards utilize that. I just wanted to show you that you may need to if something doesn't seem like it's fitting right. You should have what you need. You might just need to take a step back, do a quick Google search or look in your manual and you can figure it out. But that's literally it. Put your cover back on. M.2 is now installed. Once I put this cover back on like so. Screwdriver again. Boom. M.2 installed. Okay guys, so now we're at the stage where our motherboard is completely finished. Up here, we have our RAM installed, our CPU installed, our cooler installed, our M.2 is installed now, and that's the basics to assembling your motherboard. Um, that's the first step to uh, pretty much building your PC. So now that that's assembled, the next step is to get the motherboard into our case. We're using our NZXT 500i case, we're gonna take the glass off, we're gonna, um, get this screwed into the case from there. And then from there, what's left to do is pretty much connect our power supply, get our hard drive in, and just pretty much do wiring. So right now, open up the case, I'm gonna get the motherboard into the case, and then we will go from there. So let's jump into this and get moving on this next step.
Okay guys, so I got it all mounted in. For some reason, the video didn't record, but um, basically, I kind of justified it in the beginning, like that little clip I put up, but then you just go around, you screw them all down, and that's kind of it. Now, some motherboards may not have. This is called the IO shield. This is what's known as the IO shield. Some other boards, you'll have to physically put it in, like you clip it into place back here. You just pretty much line it up, tap it in, and it will click in this little slot. This motherboard already has it built on to the motherboard itself, so we don't have to worry about that, but that's pretty simple, um, and that's that. Slide it. There's like little tracks, you just literally slide it in like that. And then you have all these screws on the side to secure it in place. Three on this side, and, sorry, three on this side, and three on this side. So we're gonna get those screws now and we're gonna secure this down and then we could put the cage mounted back inside of the case. All right guys, so now for the front panel connectors. Um, you got your USB 3.0 plug. It says right on it, USB 3.0 plug. This is gonna get plugged in in the USB 3.0 slot, which if you look at the bottom of the motherboard, it's marked USB 3.0. So we go ahead, just push that in, and that's connected. F panel is a little bit more difficult when they're not all together like this, but luckily they are for me. Um, your case may have all these separate ones separated, which is a pain, I know, but you just have to take the time to look at the manual and the case manual to figure out where they go on the motherboard. But for me, luckily, it's all in one harness, so we just find the F panel slot. Once again, it's marked. USB and you just look for USB. And then HD audio will be your last one, which it's marked audio. It's pretty simple, but these can be a real pain depending on your case setup. And more importantly, if the F panels are all separated, but that's literally all our case plugs connected now. We'll obviously clean all these wires up later um, at the end but that's all connected now, and that's basically it. All right guys, so now I have the power supply in. I'm gonna show you guys pretty simply, and there's a lot of wires on this power supply, but I'm gonna show you guys the ones you need to worry about. 24 pin, I'm gonna feed that right back up through here. The 24 pin is your main, main power source for the motherboard. So you feed that through here. connected. Now next, um, this is just something that you don't need, but I have some cable extensions. You can get these from like cable mods, I think the website is, or if you have a micro center or a store, they sometimes carry these. Um, pretty much just to make it look a little bit cleaner with the uh, ketchup and mustard wires that I have on this P uh, power supply. So we're going to put this one on the uh, CPU power and then the other one will be for the power wire for our GPU, but we're not there yet. All right guys, for this next little section, we're gonna install the GPU. Pretty simple, just remove the necessary um, covers on the back, whichever ones fit, you can just line it up and check. You pop your port open, line it up. Push, it 
these in. All right guys, so we are finished up. The PC is completely assembled and we are at the point now where all I have to do is just clean up some of the wires in the back of the case, tuck all the wires away, put the cover on the case, and then we're gonna take uh, the computer upstairs to uh, my uh, gaming area set up where I'm gonna try to get this, make sure hopefully it boots, and then we're gonna get Windows uploaded on it. And then that's pretty much it. Um, computer should be ready to use and if all goes well and we go to boot it, we should be in good shape. So I'm just gonna clean up these wires really quickly and then we'll be back upstairs at the uh, setup where we can test this and make sure that everything is working properly. All right guys, so as I said before, I didn't show you guys the test boot, but booted right up, everything seemed perfect and everything is running great now. Um, so the only the next step I have to do is just install Windows on the computer, which I'm going to make an, uh, I'm going to make a separate video to this because some people might be so lost in how to make a USB bootable drive. Um, basically all you need to do, well, it, I'm not going to show you this video. So if you just do a YouTube search, it will come like right up. It's super simple, super easy, but basically you're just using a software to take the windows software and put it onto a USB flash drive to flash onto your fresh built PC. I'm going to make a video on how to make a bootable flash drive. But once you have the flash drive made, which takes all of five minutes, it's a really simple process. You just follow you just follow the instructions on your screen and basically boot it, Windows will be installed and just do your basic computer setup. But um, so this video is gonna come to an end here. We totally built this whole PC from scratch. Um, I'm sorry if things were a little bit like weird. I never really filmed a whole video like this in this depth and detail before. Um, I tried to cover pretty, pretty much everything. Um, I know the wiring gets a little bit tricky for me to kind of explain and do at the same time because it's something so simple, but it really is a pain sometimes running them and catching, getting in the right pins and things like that. But I think I kind of got my point across and you guys should help help you guys a little bit with the wiring, but I think everything else I'm pretty confident that I hope a new person can watch this video and feel comfortable either watching it walking along or watching it just for more knowledge on how to build your first PC because it seems scary at first, but as you've seen, it's kind of simple. I walked you guys through it and you can just use this video to help you the whole way through. I hope you enjoyed this video. Expect the video with the uh, Windows flash drive file to this one. Once it's done, I will link it in like a card up in the video for you guys to click on. But that's it, it's running good. I'm gonna exit the video with just a little bit of a, a, an edit of the PC running. And that's gonna be it. Um, I do stream uh, a lot of different games on Twitch pretty regularly, uh, pretty much Monday through Friday at the moment. Um, I'll leave a link to that. I'd love to see some of you guys there. If you have any questions about PC building, feel free to come into my chat when I'm live to ask me questions. And then, you know, come hang out and enjoy the games I play. I, get, I play Escape from Tarkov a lot, PUBG, Call of Duty, pretty much everything. I play a lot of different games, mostly first person shooters, but I'd love to see some of you guys there in the stream. And if this video helps you, please leave a like, and if possible, subscribe, because it really helps me out a lot as I'm trying to grow the channel and do a lot more things like this. So thank you guys for watching. I hope this helped, and I'll see you guys in the next one. Peace.